So in the previous video, we saw how fluoroquinolone antibiotics bind to uh, the DNA gyrase enzyme or the type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4 enzyme, and basically the enzyme still ca um, causes a double-strand cut in the DNA. It still forms this complex, it still unwinds the DNA, but then it can't re-ligate the two strands back together and then dissociate. So it forms this complex, and something then activates DNA repair mechanisms. Either it's this complex, or it's the fact that if all of the DNA uh, topoisomerase enzymes are in these complexes, then you're going to get um, then you're going to get um, supercoiling of the DNA because they're not doing their job properly, and that supercoiling of the DNA may well lead to DNA fragmenting apart, and that may recruit DNA repair mechanisms as well. However, what happens basically is far too much activation of the DNA repair mechanisms uh, happens, and the cell thinks that it's undergoing genetic a genetic crisis, basically. And it says, I can't cope with this anymore. We're just going to have to commit suicide because um, we're endangering our brothers, basically, here. Okay, uh, so that's how fluoroquinolones cause... Uh, bactericidal effects. They are a bactericidal antibiotic because they actually kill bacteria. They don't just stop them dividing, they actually kill the ones that are there. So it's a bactericidal antibiotic. And now we should look at some examples of uh, fluoroquinolone antibiotics. Okay, right. So, examples of fluoroquinolones then so fluoroquinolones now fluoroquinolones are oh dear uh, fluoroquinolones fluoroquinolones are divided into different generations basically they're categorized into different generations now the first um first um first-generation fluoroquinolones are not really used anymore. Uh, an example would be the drug on which they are all based. So, first-generation fluoroquinolones. And the drug on which they are all based is something called naladixic acid, which actually isn't a fluoroquinolone at all, it's just a quinolone. So, first-generation, you would have naladixic acid. Okay, and this is basically the drug on which all the later fluoroquinolones are based, but it itself is not a fluoroquinolone. It doesn't have the fluorine, so it's just a quinolone. But it is a reasonably potent um, uh, inhibitor of these DNA gyrase and uh, type 2 DNA topoisomerase 4 enzymes. Okay, second generation. Now, these are important. You will see these prescribed many, many times. So, second generation uh, fluoroquinolones. Okay, uh, so second generation, the archetypal fluoroquinolone of all the fluoroquinolones, Cipro, or ciprofloxacin in full. So this is a drug uh, which is commonly prescribed for um, urinary tract infections, uh, urinary tract infections, basically. If you've got a urinary tract infection, they will want to put you on this drug for probably about a month. Uh, ciprofloxacin, then. Another second generation fluoroquinolone is uh, norfloxacin. Okay. Uh, then the third generation fluoroquinolone, so third generation. Um, in the third generation, there is a drug known as levofloxacin. And this drug is used often to treat community acquired pneumonia. So, uh, pneumonia you can use this to treat. So, pneumonia. Okay, and it's slightly better at killing gram-positive bacteria than ciprofloxacin, which we use to treat urinary tract infections, which are generally caused, uh, but not exclusively caused, by E. coli, which is a gram-negative bacteria, whereas pneumonia is generally caused by, um, well, um, uh, streptococcus pneumoniae, uh, which is a gram-positive bacterium, and levofloxacin is slightly more effective against that than ciprofloxacin. Right, and now the fourth generation one, the only example I know of the fourth generation fluoroquinolones, is gatifloxacin. And again, as you go up the generations, they're becoming slightly better at targeting gram-positive bacteria than the lower generations. So gatifloxacin, again, uh, will be effective against community-acquired pneumonia, i.e. streptococcus pneumoniae. 
Okay, right, so those are the examples of fluoroquinolones. As I say, they're used to treat urinary tract infections, community-acquired pneumonia. They're also used to treat bacterial gastroenteritis, so infections of the intestine, uh, or, uh, well, the stomach and intestine, the gastrointestinal tract, the GIT. Um, and they are very, very potent. Okay, uh, so now we're going to look at, uh, oh, and they're not too toxic. As antibiotics go, they are, they, they, they aren't, uh, they have very few side effects, uh, unless you're very unlucky. Uh, they're nice drugs to take, basically. Um, you know, if you take uh, a penicillin, like flucloxacillin, uh, what you end up with is uh, you get quite bad diarrhea. Whereas fluoroquinolones, if you take ciprofloxacin, it doesn't have that side effect generally of giving you diarrhea because uh, flucloxacillin causes diarrhea because um, it kills all the gut flora and then doesn't kill uh, nasty species of bacteria. It doesn't manage to kill them, and then they overgrow because you've killed the other gut flora, and then that, they cause diarrhea. Whereas ciprofloxacin is more powerful, it kills these nasty species of bacteria as well. So that means that they are generally nicer to take than um, flucloxacillin and other penicillins. Okay, right, so let's discuss the Coumarins now, which are a much less prescribed antibiotic uh, class than uh, the fluoroquinolones. Uh, but there are two examples which um, I know, uh, and one is Coumamycin A1, so Coumamycin A1, and the other is Novobiosin. And basically, a lot less research has been done into um, these two drugs compared to the fluoroquinolones. For instance, we know uh, that the fluoroquinolones uh, prevent uh, the uh, re-ligation of the DNA, basically, and therefore lead to the accumulation of these complexes uh, where you have the DNA with um, the topisomerase stuck in between it uh, and then the other half of the DNA going off the other way. Okay, uh, we don't know as much about the mechanisms of novobiosin and, um, and uh, cumamycin. What we do know is they target the same enzyme. They target DNA gyrase, and they affect its activity in some way. We also know that they are bactericidal antibiotics, so they manage to kill the bacteria. So you can imagine that their mechanism might be very similar, i.e. they may well bind to it, activate, uh, well, stop it from re-ligating the DNA uh, and uh, then activate DNA repair mechanisms or they may just inhibit this enzyme, i.e. they may stop its function altogether, i.e. it no longer even binds to the DNA in the first place and then you might get uh, bactericidal action by uh, the uh, supercoiling of the DNA leading to its fragmentation. That argument is slightly less convincing because of the fact that you have so many other types of DNA uh, topoisomer is pre present in the cell, which could, uh, you would think, um, take over for the uh, lack of the function of DNA gyrase, basically compensate for it. But whatever the mechanism of these is, uh, it does have a bacter bactericidal effect, and it probably has a very similar mechanism to the fluoroquinolones. Okay, so that's the end of this video.